So the final um, part of this unit then is going to be all about uh, plotting three-dimensional data. Um, so it's often the case you end up with something which is measured um, as a function of two independent variables. So you have a z as a function of x and y, um, and therefore you have three-dimensional data. It's quite tempting to go and immediately go and try and make a 3D plot of that. Um, I want to put a caution in there. It's not always the most useful way of showing the data. It's often the case there are better ways to go and show the data that give you a better idea of what's really going on, rather than immediately leaping to some fancy 3D plot. Um, as you did with the scatter plot, one of the things you could do is you could use the color to indicate that third dimension. Um, or you could make a contour plot, for example. The one thing you should consider when you start thinking about plotting up three-dimensional data is whether your data is arranged on a regular uniform grid or whether it's non-uniformly sampled. So in other words, um, do the X and Y coordinates of your data make up a nice regular rectangular grid? Um, or do they all slightly change around a bit, or is it just completely arbitrarily sampled? Because that will control how you go about uh, choosing to plot your data. So we'll start with uniformly sampled data. So if you've got uniformly sampled data, then you should be able to describe your data as a simple 2D numpy array containing your Z values. And then you probably would have two 1D arrays of X and Y data, or you might possibly have two 2D arrays that describe the mesh coordinates of your Z data. Um, so let's go and just construct a simple example um, uh, data set. So I just create uh, my X and Y um, as two 1D arrays from minus two to plus two um, with a lot of data points. Um, I then create a mesh of them using the numpy mesh grid as we did before. Um, and I then go and do some maths and finally end up with uh, my array Z, which is a 2D two dimensional array, which has some smoothly varying um, set of X and Y, set of data as a function of X and Y. Okay, so the first thing we can do is just plot that as a color plot. And so that's done with the p color function. And so we specify again the x and y uh, coordinates. So that's just the edges of my array. Uh, p color will also work with the mesh coordinates. So it'll take either. And then the z as a two dimensional array, giving me the, um, the, the z coordinate for every data point. And in this case, I've given it a, a C map. So I've told it how to map the z values onto a color. Um, the second call I do there is plot.color bar. That's responsible for drawing that uh, vertical scale color bar uh, on the right hand side, because of course, obviously, we should have some way of identifying what numbers actually correspond to that color scale. Um, and so we end up with a, a plot like that. As I said, a contour plot is often a good way to go and show your data. And it's also pretty nice if you can combine it with a, a color plot. So here's an example of doing just that. So again, we, we're working with the same data set. Um, I start off by defining some levels for my contours. So I said I want 20 uh, contour levels between one and minus one. Um, I then do the same P color plot as we just did. The only difference is this time I'm using the gray color map in order to go and plot my data with. Um, and I give it a color bar um, and I tell it to go and put the ticks, i.e. the um, the levels um, at the same point as I'm going to use my contours. Um, and I've also told it how to go and format the uh, values for those texts. Um, and that again is covered in the strings uh, unit two, no, unit one of strings. Um, uh, so go and have a look at that uh, unit uh, for details about what that code actually means. So having got the color plot in, the next thing I can do then is just simply go and plot the contours on top. And again, you can see I've specified the same coordinates, the levels I'm using, and told that I want the co um, contours to be red. Um, when I put in a color for my contours, it will um, draw the positive ones in solid and the negative ones in negative. If I don't specify a color, it'll use a color map um, to indicate the, the height of each contour. 
what you can see here is when I called plot, plot dot contour, I also grabbed hold of the result of that call into the variable ax, and I then use that later to go and call this c-label function, um, which is used to go and set um, to draw on the actual little labels of the contour plot. So it's got the values of each contour drawn onto the plot. And I'm doing a little bit just to set up the um, the, the font of that um, and how it looks, and again, to specify the format. And so you can make quite a complicated uh, contour and color plot. Um, another option you might use then would be just to draw a filled contour plot. Um, and so that's done with a contour f function. And you can see here, it's just simply drawn each contour as a separate um, shade of gray uh, in the plot. And when I did the uh, color bar for it, um, it's also given me um, the, the corresponding um, uh, 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 grayscale contours. And again, you notice when I call the color bar, I'm telling it which of the the plots it should be drawing the color bar for. So that's so it can work out what the levels of the contours actually are that it should show and what color scheme it should show on the contour plot. Kind of a special case of plotting uh, three-dimensional data on, on a 2D set of axes is when you're plotting an image. So in an image, each pixel has an associated color. And this can be encoded either just as a single number, so in other words, like a grayscale image, or um, it can be uh, represented as a um, single integer, which gives you a lookup to some kind of color table, or it might be a number that gives you separate values for red, green, and blue uh, channels in your data. You might even have a fourth number giving you a transparency to apply to each pixel. Um, so Python has a whole range of different libraries that can be used for manipulating image data. So here I'm just going to use one called ImageIO, which happens to be one of the simpler ones to use. Um, so I just import the imread function from ImageIO, and I use it and pass it a, a website address where I happen to know there's an image. Um, and then I'm using the plot.imshow function and just passing it that data. Now, in fact, that data I've read in, because it's a full scale color image, is in fact a three dimensional array. So it has um, the row, it has the column. So in other words, the, the number coming down the screen, number going across the screen. And then it has, um, for each pixel, it's got three numbers representing red, green, and blue. And Imsho is able to interpret that three dimensional array and decide it should represent it as a, as a full color image like this. So note that there's a big difference between using ImShow and pColor. So ImShow will work with proper color data. Uh, pColor wants just a, a single value for each uh, point it should plot. But the big difference is that an image, conventionally, the origin of the image is the top left corner. Whereas when we make a plot with something like pColor or any of the other plots, the origin has been the bottom left corner. Um, and so they actually are, are indexing the, the actually sort of showing you the image uh, in two different ways round. So just to go and show this, what we're going to do is show you both the same image in ImShow and pColor. But because uh, pColor is only going to work with a single number, the first thing we need to go and do is convert our image data into a grayscale image. And with this set of data, the easiest way to go and do that is simply go and take the average value of the red, green, and blue channels in the data that we had. So we can do that. So um, here we're calling plot.imshow, but now rather than passing it data, I'm doing data.mean and using the axis equals two. Um, this is coming from the uh, NumPy uh, unit two videos. Um, to take the average um, along the third dimension of my image data, which is the color channels. And so that takes the mean value of the red, the green, and the blue pixel data. Um, and then because I've not told it how to go and color those values, it's picked its default color map, which is the uh, Viridus uh, one, uh, which gives us a sort of yellow to blue color scheme. Um, if we then do 
the same thing with uh, P color, then you can see this um, immediately, the image is upside down because the origin is now at the bottom left and not the top left corner. Um, and so it, it flips the image the other way up. The other thing to notice is that the aspect ratio has changed. And that's because Imshow will always use square pixels. So it knows that the image is how many pixels it is by how many wide, um, uh, wide by high, and it will set its image size to the, the frame it's using so that the pixels it draws are square. Whereas P color is, is, is um, obeying the figure size that I've set for this uh, set of slides. And so you get something which is where the pixels are slightly rectangular. And so it becomes slightly distortedly um, uh, it, stretched out in the X axis as well as being upside down. So to kind of fix all of those things, well, we should use Imshow. And it might also be nice if we explicitly told it to use the gray uh, color map since we're now looking at a grayscale image. And so that ends up looking much more um, reasonable as an image. So Imshow is the correct thing to be using if you want to be plotting um, uh, image data. Um, you can, of course, then also be doing all kinds of mathematical operations with the underlying NumPy data. So you can do things like edge detection and uh, changing the contrast and so on. Those sorts of manipulations are all possible in code um, using Python, using NumPy, SciPy, and some of the other image processing libraries. But the basic display is handled by matplotlib imshow. OK, so if you really do feel you need to go and do your um, plot as a proper 3D plot, then you can go and do that uh, using matplotlib as well. So um, first of all, let's just go make a couple of functions up um, to uh, help us label our plot. So this is just exactly the, uh, the same as we did. Um, the other thing we need to go and do is we need to import this mplot3d module uh, from the MPL toolkits. Um, package. So um, in matplotlib, the 3D plotting is a sort of add-on extra, um, and you enable it by simply doing this import. You don't then actually use mplot3d directly, but after you've imported it, the 3D plotting becomes available. Um, and so here's a, a quick example. This is just doing a contour plot. And the big difference between what we we're doing before is that I have to explicitly create a set of axes. So now Rather than just leaping in straight after creating the figure to doing the plot, I call plot.axes <clears throat> and I explicitly tell it that we're doing a 3D projection. And that creates a set of axes, X, Y, and Z to go and use. And the variable we're returning out of plot.axes, which are called AX, then is a 3D set of axes. And so it knows that when I call contour with it, that I'm wanting to plot an X, Y, Z contour. So again, I just passed it the X and the Y variables and then my Z data, told it I want 50 contours and to color the contours with a gray map, with the, the gray color map. And you can see the result here. Um, the other thing my uh, label 3D plot is doing um, is it's setting the orientation from which to go and view the axes. So the very last line of that function was being used to set up how I could, could look in on the axes. Um, if you're plotting uh, with some of the interactive plotting tools, you can actually spin the 3D plot around and um, zoom in and zoom out and so on um, to choose exactly the viewpoint you want. Because the disadvantage with 3D plotting is it's very, very hard to choose the best possible angle to show your data. It very much depends on exactly what your data looks like as to whether how you show it best to make it the, the least confusing um, way you can do it. You can also do a filled contour plot. Um, that's just simply by using contour F, um, a bit like we just did with the 2D plotting. But again, notice I'm doing it by creating those three dimensional axes and then doing ax.contourf to create a 3D filled contour plot with them. Um, and in this example, again, I've just reduced the number of axes a bit. And because I didn't specify a color map, it's used the default one. Uh, another option you can do is to use a wireframe plot. Um, and this again is rather similar. The function is uh, ax.plotWireframe. Um, for the wireframe plot, I have to give it the mesh coordinates. So I have to give it the, um, the X and Y coordinates of every 
uh, mesh point in the in the grid, as well as the the Z data, um, and then the R stride and the C stride are reducing the um, number of data points it uses to go and construct the mesh. And I've done that just so you can sort of see the holes in the mesh. Um, so if I didn't put the C stride and R stride in, it would just look like a solid blue mass and it'd be difficult to see exactly what was going on. If I increase those numbers, then the sort of squares used up to make the, the, the wireframe mesh would get bigger. And of course, you can also do a filled surface. So that's just done with plot surface. Again, it works the same way. I give it the, the mesh coordinates. So um, the coordinates of every single X and Y data point. Um, and I can give it this color map. I can pick different color maps here. I've just used the default one. Um, you notice it does have some slight problems where your data is changing very, very fast in the middle there. Um, and so you get these artifacts, which are due to um, the differences in the way the data appears. If you've got non-uniformly sampled data, so where you haven't got a regular grid, then you need to uh, take a slightly different approach. So you've got three different options, really. So you can interpolate your data back to a regular grid um, using scipy.interpolate.grid data. Um, this is something we covered in unit two of the scipy uh, tutorials. Um, or you can make a three-dimensional scatter plot graph. Um, or there's a third option, which is to do something called a tri-surface plot. So we'll just look at each of those in turn. So first of all, let's just go and create our data. So I'm going to create a um, set of 200 X and Y data points chosen at random uh, from the, the field of data. And then I go and calculate the Z values that correspond to those uh, two dimensional data points. So X, Y, and Z are all one dimensional arrays, which are 200 data points long. So first of all, the interpolation method. Um, so I need to do a couple of steps here. So first of all, I need to um, import the grid data function from scipy interpolate. I then need to create a mesh of X and Y data points. So um, here I'm creating a set of um, uh, uh, 16 by 16 data points over the same minus two to plus two data space that I've done my um, interpolation, I, I've done my random data points over. And I'm again using an NP mesh grid. So it creates two two dimensional arrays, which are the X and Y coordinates of every single um, intersection of my grid of my data. And then I call grid data and I pass it in the um, X and Y and Z coordinates of the data points I have. And then the X um, and Y data points that I want to uh, calculate my um, value over. And it wants the new data points to be one dimensional arrays. So I have to call xx.ravel and yy.ravel to take those two dimensional arrays and just turn them into big long one dimensional arrays. Um, that will then give me uh, back a one dimensional array of data points which corresponds to the x and y data points. So I just reshape that back to be the same shape as I start off with the mesh for xx. And that's simply to allow me to then go and um, uh, say, for example, in this case, make a, um, a, a contour plot. Um, so the contour um, works the same way. It wants the X and Y coordinates of the edges. And so I pass those in. Um, and uh, again, I've just done 50 contour lines. Usually it looks quite similar to the contour plot we had before. Um, if I want to make a scatter plot, well, that's actually really super easy. I just take my, um, uh, create my, for example, three dimensional axes. It's, uh, again, the plot function is just called scatter. It takes X, Y, and Z. Um, and I also going to tell it I want to make the color of my data point equal to the Z value and to use a color map so that the points get colored according to the Z value you've got there. But of course, you could, you could make your, your colors do anything you like. Um, and you can sort of see roughly that the shape of the data that we've got there. And then a tri-surf uh, plot is similar, except it makes up little triangles from the data points you've given it. So it's not interpolating your data exactly. It's just simply looking at the nearest sets of data and making a set of triangles and then making a little bit of flat surface from that. 
So it makes an approximation to the data. If you compare that with what we had previously for the surface plot, it's the same basic shape, but it's at lower detail and it's irregular detail. And that's because my data is only sampled at 200 data points and, and sampled rather randomly. But again, it's a quick way of getting a representation of a randomly sampled set of data.